Oh my gosh, my hair looks horrible. That's okay. Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 43. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. Um, I just said that. I'm confused. It is. I feel like it's super bright on my face, but it may just be my phone. I think the brightness is all the way up on it. I'm sorry if this is a really bright, shiny video. We just got back from um, playing at uh, Devin's dad's house, and we went to the park and stuff. You know, we did some family stuff. So it's a little hot and sweaty because it's like in the 80s, the late 80s. <laughs> and the window's right here. I'm trying to find a good angle to start filming at because I got some new shelves for my table, my craft table. Um, so I can't, I can't really set it up the way that I did before. Anyways, welcome back to Look At Your Name. Uh, I want to welcome all the new subscribers and welcome back to all the original ones or the returning ones. Excuse me, I just drank a milkshake, so I'm real burpy. <laughs> I'm always burpy. But yeah, my hair looks horrible, but like I said, we just got back from playing and I needed to film this real quick. Uh, the boys are outside. Devin took him down to the playground to play a little bit so that I could film. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I don't have any finished objects this week. I thought that I would have the Santa Claus. Oh, that little sticky thing. I'm trying to find somewhere to put it. I thought that I would have the um, Huggable Santa Claus done. Uh, but I just didn't finish him. I'm almost done with him. I only have his facial features, his beard, and his hat. And I'm working on his hat. Two things about that pad. Well, I'll get to that when I start talking about it. But like I said, I don't have any finished objects other than stitch markers, if you count that. Um, I did work a little bit on some material. <laughs> uh, not, I didn't actually make a bag yet. I'm just making like a patchwork thing to make a bag with. And it turns out that's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to piece little pieces together. But uh, I figured it out. I got a flow of it. So now I got one side down. I just have to make another panel, which I'll show you that in a minute too. But real fast, in a little announcements in the front is first of all, I want to remind everybody of the Cakewalk Cal that's going on. It's hosted, it's co-hosted with me and Mo from Unseen Strands, and I will link her. Uh, let's see here. I think it's this corner. <laughs> I'll link her up there. Um, it's going on until October, so you still have plenty of time, and it's to use cake, um, caked yarns, either pre-caked, like you bought it at the store, like I'm a dollar or something. Or yarn that you caked yourself to make any projects you want and then you enter the finished objects in either of our hers is on the Ravelry on her Ravelry group mine's on my Facebook group which will be linked below uh, and then you have a chance to win some prizes so there's already a lot of entries in each the Ravelry group and on my Facebook group and there's a lot of awesome ones and it's all kinds of different stuff it's really neat so if you're interested in that um, hop over to Mo's uh, keep on saying Facebook Mo's Ravelry group, which will be linked below, or my Facebook group, which will also be linked below. The other announcement is uh, I drew the winner for the Knit Crate yarn, the main Knit Crate yarn. I would show it to you, but it's wrapped up in tissue paper to keep it clean. Um, and the winner was Teresa, I think that's pronounced right, because it's got an H in it, and the H threw my brain off when I read it. But I think it's Teresa King. She's already been notified and, you know, was happy, so... Uh, I'll be mailing it out to her tomorrow, which for me is Monday, because today's Sunday. I was supposed to film yesterday, I never got the chance. But, um, and also, let's see here. That's the only thing. Oh yeah, because right now, you probably have until later today, because I'm going to put this out either Sunday night or Monday morning. Uh, on the Facebook group, we've reached 300 members, over 300 members. Um, so I, I have a current uh, giveaway there that's open for a Ravelry pattern. You at five U.S. dollars or under. Uh, I'm closing it Monday night, probably around like eight o'clock my time, Central Time. Um, so if you if you're not a member, go join it, and you can answer the question I have on that thread, and uh, you have a chance to win. <laughs> There's a lot of people in this one. The first two giveaways, not a lot of people seen them because I only did it for a few hours. That's why I decided to to extend this one a few days so that more people would have a chance to see the post and enter it. So right now, there's I think there's like 60-something comments on there, so that's pretty good. And let's see here. I think that's everything. All the little announcements. So let's go ahead and hop into my whips. Like I said, the windows are here, and I keep seeing like bugs and stuff fly by. There's a lightning bug on the window <laughs> right now. All right, let's whips. This will, excuse me, we'll start with Santa since he's on the top of the basket. This is the Huggable Santa Claus by Ashley Kaiser, which is Sorella. Sorella? Yeah, Sorella. Um, first, 
before I show you my Santa. <laughs> I had intended to make three or four sets of Mr. and Mrs. Claus for the um, Christmas bazaar thingy that I'm doing later this year. Um, <clears throat> however, this pattern, although it's a good pattern, it's written good. It's it's actually cute, and I'm gonna finish it and keep it. And but I probably won't make it Mrs. Claus. <laughs> I'll probably just give this Santa to my sister, or maybe just see if I can sell him just by himself because I just didn't enjoy this pattern at all. I much preferred working on Mary Smith's Santa Amigurumi. It's like her giant Amigurumi Santa. I made me a Santa last year and I still have to make me a Mrs. Claus. So I'm thinking I'm going to go back to her because hers is more Amigurumi style. Whereas this one's done like a rag doll. And I just, I guess I just don't enjoy that kind of crochet. I'm trying to find a camera. Like I said in my other video, it's black. So if I'm not looking directly at it, I'm trying. I know it's in this general direction. <laughs> but, um... <clears throat> Yeah, so instead of making three or four sets of this Santa and Mrs. Claus, I'm going to make the Emigurumi ones. And they're still pretty big. I think they're 18 inches or so. It's pretty big. I just can't remember. Mine's in my closet. And I might make some of the elves also. But this is the Santa so far. If you're a member of the Facebook group, you would have seen him. I've got all of him. His head's floppy. That's another thing I didn't like. The pattern doesn't say how to sew the head on to make it not floppy. It just says to sew the head on. So, and, and some of my amigurumis, I use a dowel. Like, it'll go halfway through the body, halfway through the head, and hold the head steady. And Mary Smith explains that in her pattern. This pattern doesn't say anything about that. So, his head is floppy. So, if you did use this Santa, you'd have to have him propped up against, you know, like in a sitting position, propped up against something. But, I gotta make his beard, his facial features, and his hat, and I guess his hair. I'm not exactly sure if there's hair, but uh, I am working on the hat. It's almost done. I just, it's still attached to the yarn, so it's still up there on my bookshelf, but um, I don't know. It's, it's a good size. I love the size because it'd be so cute set in like your living room, but I'm just not happy with the pattern. I don't know. It's just not my thing. I like Emigurumi style better than Ragdoll style, and he's so floppy. I don't know. I will finish it and either try to sell it or just give it to my sister because she, she expressed interest in it. <laughs> But, um, as for the yarn, this is Red Heart Super Saver Cherry Red, Red Heart Super Saver Black for his belt and his feet. And the skin color is, I love this yarn. Oh my gosh, my neighbor's washer is unbalanced. <laughs> uh, I love this yarn. He must not be home. I love this yarn, Light Peach. That's shaking the house. Can y'all hear that? rough well it's gonna mess our washer up but yeah and his there's no other colors that'll be added because i think maybe his cheeks might be a pink color i can't remember but yeah i will finish it i'm just not happy with it like look at that i don't like how floppy it is <laughs> check him back there but yeah i mean if you're into ragdoll style uh dolls and groomies go for it but i like the more amigurumi style the single crochet um devin just sent me a picture he's right outside he just sent me a picture i'm gonna go look at it see what he's showing was a picture of this guy <laughs> anyways um yeah that's everything i have to say about that santa claus it just wasn't my it's not, not up my alley or whatever that saying is next whip i think this is the cat this is not the yarn for it this is a bunch of yarn to make multiple ones <laughs> uh each cat takes two skeins of, or not skeins but two colorways um ish you know i mean you could use any colors you want but i just picked out a bunch of cat colors and they're in this bag and then i'm just going to use them out of this bag because i'm planning on making a few of these cats and the pattern is a free pattern it is cats are liquid by a name i'm not going to try to pronounce because i'm going to slaughter it but it'll be linked below uh i think the pattern calls for a e hook but i'm using an elf hook because that's my favorite size hook to make amigurumis with and I'm using Red Heart Super Saver Buff. So far, I've, this is all I got. <laughs> this is the head. I just, uh, this is the size that the head will be. And then from here, I think I got to decrease a little bit and then start increasing for the body. And I will pop up a picture right here of what it's going to look like. It's just really cute. The one in the picture kind of looks like a Siamese cat. And that's what this one's going to look like. So this is Red Heart Super Saver Buff. And then for the dark brown, I got a scrap ball somewhere right here of red heart with love i think this is called chocolate 
it's just a dark brown color that's gonna be that cat and then i'm gonna make a few more i just got different shades of browns and some whites and off whites and black down in there just to make some little cats that i'm going to use just as uh, cats <laughs> at the the craft show or just to have or maybe on my etsy or something Whew, i gotta catch my breath i'm talking really fast but yeah that's just in my um season greetings holiday bag with box bottom this is my large bag size if anyone's interested uh because i do i am going to be selling those in my etsy shop if you're interested no pressure though you don't have to buy them it's all right what's in this bag what am i making that's blue Oh yeah, Christmas lights. <laughs> this is the Christmas lights. I talked about that last uh, week also. I haven't worked on any at all. It's still just the two. But I'll mention it anyways and I'll pop up a picture right here of what it's supposed to look like. Uh, if you weren't with me last year, I made two strands. A really long one for myself and a shorter one for my sister. Uh, but it's the Christmas lights by Jean Herman. Super quick, easy pattern. I've got two blue bulbs done and a half. Um... I enjoy this pattern a lot. I'm planning on making five of the long strands to put in the bazaar uh, this Christmas. But yeah, I'm, I think I use an elf hook and uh, red heart yarn. That's red heart super saver. I think it's just called blue. And it's living in my cardinal bag. This isn't a box quarter corner. This is just a regular sack, I guess. <laughs> Again, it's the large size. I love drawstring bags because you don't have to worry about your yarn getting stuck in zippers. I do. I did make one zipper bag and it's actually got a project in it, but I've also had my yarn stuck in it a few times. So I do prefer uh, drawstring bags because you can't get stuff stuck in it. And also you can leave your yarn in the bag and pull it out at the top and have it still in the bag clean. You don't roll around on the floor and be working from it. Alright, I have one more whip to show you one more active whip and it's in my cat bag this is the zipper bag the one zipper bag i made it is interfaced too i was this is the first bag i ever made interfaced and with a zipper and the interfacing turned out pretty good i did it all right but the zipper i messed up um somewhere right here i didn't sew it properly and like the fat quarter material is sticking is not under the zipper does that make sense I don't know. but it still works enough for me and this is also the bag that made me realize I don't like making or using zipper bags. But, um, yeah, this is my last whip. This is a, I'm not using a pattern for this. This is just a stitch. And it is a quarter to corner. I realize I talked about how I don't like corner to corners. And I don't like corner to corner graph gans. Those are the ones that are complicated for me. And you have so much yarn and bobbins and stuff that it's just a mess. And I'm just, I just don't enjoy it. This is just a plain old corner to corner with. A solid thing of yarn well it's, it's a self-striping yarn but it's one piece of yarn <laughs> technically it's two because I'm holding it double and for it I'm using um, two cakes well it's gonna probably be four or six no four or eight cakes of uh, mandala in the colorway unicorn <laughs> I've about halfway down with the first two I'm holding them together so that it's thicker and I'm using an H hook and this is it so far. I've been working on this a lot because this is a good project for me to work on with Jesse is playing because if he comes over and wants to sit on me or sit beside me or something, I can still work on this. I don't have to look at a pattern. I, you know, I just have the corner to corner stitch memorized. All right, and this is it so far. I just got into the white. But it starts off with this blue gray and then it starts getting into the pink. And then it's light pink into the bright pink, and then it goes into white, and then it starts back with gray. So this is as far as I got with about half of the first two cakes. I was thinking if I made it with four cakes, you know, increased all the way up till I ran out of the first two, and then decreased all the way down till I ran out to the second two, you know, to the ends, and then do a border and like wide or something. It'd be a good baby size blanket, but if I wanted to make it bigger, I could use four cakes increasing and then four cakes decreasing and it would be a bigger like lapkin I haven't decided yet <laughs> I'll have to wait I have two more cakes of this in my stash so if I do make it bigger I'll have to buy four cakes which is fine I don't mind that it's you know it's like four dollars a ball I think some people are getting really lucky but yeah I just think it's turning out really pretty I tried to match up the skeins the cakes um not a hundred percent but really close to the same Stripe, stripe striping <laughs> but it does 
have this cool fade to where like you know like one of them turns starts turning pink before the other one I think that's neat that it did that I did have to cut out like a yard because for some reason one of them had a random yard excuse me of white in between the pink and I actually did a few stitches and I was like wait a minute because I thought it was turning white but then it stopped so I just ripped it out and cut off that part of white and put the pink back and then finished up with the pink and then it started turning to white in this area I think it looks good so far um I don't know if I want to make it baby blanket size or if I want to make it bigger I might just use make it baby blanket size just to use up the four cakes that I have just to you know stash bust it a little bit and then have a cute little baby blanket on hand to either sell or um just have on hand if I get invited to a baby shower for a little girl yeah that's all my whips all right through the other ones over there I'll deal with them later um yeah and I got some upcoming whips it's just Christmas stuff for the um bazaar thingy uh and wait i did get another acquisition one and i put with it oh i can't read it all right i guess we'll go into acquisitions now since i saw my whips <laughs> all right i'll start with these because they're loud i got these at the dollar tree there are these like half marble things i don't know what they're called what are they called glass gems decorative accents <laughs> I got these because they are big and I know that if I make an amigurumi with small stitches of the elf hook they won't be able to squeeze out between the stitches. So I got these because I found a snowman pattern that I want to make for the, the bazaar, I keep calling it bazaar, the fair, the whatever it is, <laughs> the craft show thingy that I'm doing later this year. I found some little snowman, there goes our washer again, <laughs> snowman amigurumis that require weight in the bottom and the pattern calls for those little bead thingies like in Bean Babies, but those can pop through this, the stitches, and I don't want to have to bother with buying um, pantyhose or whatever to keep them in there. So I just thought I would go buy these little rocks, because they're pretty heavy, and I could put a few of the, you know, and enough in the little snowman to hold them upright, because it's their little snowman, it's not like it's going to take a lot to hold them upright. And then these are big enough that they won't come out of the, um, the stitches. That's my idea. I don't know if it's going to work. We shall see. <laughs> uh, other acquisitions. Let's see here. What we'll, we'll did the yarn? I, but I did buy some yarn just because I needed a few of the colors and then I needed a few of them for specific projects and the other ones I just needed to replenish my stash with. And I bought five skeins. I bought this one. It's jumbo skein of Red Heart Super Saver Cherry Red because of all the Santas and Mrs. Clauses I'm making. I like this darker color red for Santa and all that just because the brighter one I think is just kind of too bright. So I just got an extra one of those to have on hand for Santa. Okay, I stick that. Then I got two Red Heart Super Saver woo, in hot red for the other Christmas things like, you know, holly berries and uh, wreaths and candy canes, anything like that. This brighter red I like for that. And then this is for a product that I'm going to be making. These are different. They're really, they look really similar, but they're different. Um, I didn't, I mentioned that my mom's gone to a Harry Potter themed baby shower and I already made her that little lovey, uh, for it, but I'm also going to make a Dobby, the house elf doll. And, um, these are the colors I got for him. This darker color, this darker brown, which is Red Heart Super Saver Buff is going to be his body, his skin color. And then this lighter brown, which is Mainstays. What color are you? Where is your color? Is it Erin? I think it's called Erin. Mainstays Erin. I think that's what the color name is. It's a lighter buff color for his pillowcase clothing. Because <laughs> in the movie, it's like almost the same color as his skin. It's a, it's a hue, you know, the same hue family <laughs> but in the pattern of the one that I'm going to be doing it's a blue color but I wanted to make it more like the movie so I'm going to try I'm going to try to make it in this color and if it looks too wonky like he's naked or something then I will go ahead and make it in some blue or green or just some color that I have laying around or maybe even a darker brown I might make a little sock to put on his foot <laughs> but uh yeah that's my yarn acquisitions I think the only other acquisitions I have involves my bags I had to get another thing of white thread because I used it all and then I got some ribbons this is a dark brown color a blue and this is a dark blue color like a navy for the drawstrings 
And then I did also buy some bead things, but they're already put up in my box. I don't even know the, sp the right names for them, but the little rotty things and um, the little circle thing. <laughs> I don't know. Just stitch marker stuff. And then I bought these beads that look like little pandas. Little panda bears. <laughs> and these are actually stitch markers that I've sold to Lisa. Hi, Lisa. From uh, Lisa's Happy to Hook. I think it's her channel name. I can't remember exactly. I'll link it up there. Uh, her and her daughter Amanda now do podcasts together. And her daughter loves pandas. So she got these for her daughter. I thought that wasn't a surprise. But maybe she already told her. <laughs> I gotta mail these tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so I already got them put together and ready to go. With the little card that I send. And the only other acquisitions I have is some material. My sister got me this one. This is a half a yard of Beauty and the Beast print that she got me. Kind of looks like the window in the beginning of the storybook, you know. Uh, so I'm going to make me a bag out of that to keep, obviously. That up there. And then I bought this. This was in the discount bin, the pre-cut bin. At Hobby Lobby. I just thought it was cute. So I bought it to make a bag with. Open it up. And it's like these little cowboys. It's just super cute. But yeah. It's also half a yard. So I can make a large size bag out of that. And I will be doing that hopefully soon. And then this is the. This is an acquisition. But this is. Well kind of I guess. This is the first patchwork panel that I've tried to make. Actually, it's the second one I've tried to make. The first one I messed up and just pitched it. <laughs> but this is the first successful one. And uh, it's with a bunch of blue scraps that I was gifted. I think I mentioned it in my last video. A woman gifted me a bunch of or some yarn and a bunch of fabric. And most of the fabric was scraps, but some of it was yardage. <laughs> but this is the first patchwork. It's all blue hues of material. And that one down there does have blue flowers in it. That's why I added it. But I, this is the first part of it. I'm going to make something similar to this to be the other part. And it's going to be one of my drawstring bags. It's going to actually be this way. And then, you know, it'll be cinched up like that. Something like that. But yeah, this was kind of, it's definitely a learning thing. Because I am relatively new to sewing. Like, I can do basic sewing. But to me, this was not basic sewing. Because you would think that it's just sewing together like you do, like, big pieces of material but it's totally different when it's little pieces I had to like I figured out how, I'm sure there's a better way to do it but you have to make sure that whatever piece you're adding is bigger than the pieces you're adding it to does that make sense so that you could shape it and then cut off the little bits on the end this piece right here took me about two hours I watched a movie while doing this a really good movie it had Madonna in it I can't remember what it's called though she was like a tried for murder but she was innocent but it turns out she wasn't innocent it's just really good <laughs> but uh yeah so I got a plenty more blue scraps to make the other panel to that and then I have another one where are those is that them another blanket that I'm making I can't I don't know where oh here they are this is with bigger stripes and it just happens to be blue also that I'm sewing together in strips like this I've already started I'm gonna cut them even after I sew them together. And they're gonna be a bag. Ooh, they're really long. Like this. So the front and back will be the same. But it'll be different stripes of blue and then cinched over the top. I was working on that this morning. That's when I ran out of thread. I had to run the store and just thread. But yeah. And then I also got a bunch of red scraps and green scraps that I'll be making scrappy bags with. I hope people are actually interested in these because. They're a lot of work, <laughs> but I'm sure the more I do it, the easier it'll get, and I'll have a method for it, but right now it's kind of difficult. But yeah, that's all my acquisitions, I think. I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, other than the bookshelves, but I'll show you. I'll like a little clip of that later. I just bought two bookshelves to put stuff on on my table and also leave room to work on my table. Um, yeah, that's everything. <laughs> um, I'm, I guess I'll go ahead and talk in to a little bit about uh, my Etsy store and all that kind of stuff. Just announcement type things other than the cakewalk cow because I already mentioned that. But, um, and the giveaway on the Facebook group. 
but I guess we'll start with Etsy. Uh, I started an Etsy shop and it's actually done fairly good. I've had three sales, which to me that's awesome. I didn't think I'd have any sales. I've had, I've sold two of my drawstring bags and one set of stitch markers. The stitch markers to Lisa. And um, I'm wanting to make more drawstring bags and put it on there. I had intended to use my Etsy store to sell crochet items, but now I think I might just lean towards crochet accessories, you know, bags and maybe stitch markers. And I'm trying to get Devin to sculpt clay stitch markers because he's really good at artsy stuff and he's got a bunch of clay and I've got some clay. So I'm going to try to make him, not make him, try to get him to make uh, stitch markers for me or the, the beads and then I'll make the actual stitch markers. So I'll get help into that. But um, yeah, I've got a few bags listed. I've got I think three up there right now and I'm going to be making more. Hopefully in the next week or so. I was going to this week, but a lot of stuff came up. <laughs> Family stuff. So, um, I only got to make, I think, two this week. And, uh, I sold one as soon as, like, right after I listed it, it, so, it sold. I wish I had more of that material, because it seems to be a very popular material. <laughs> but I don't. But, um, yeah, and then stitch markers. If anyone's interested in that, I'm going to, I'm going to be listing some more of these panda ones. Probably tonight. I've got another four set that I will be listing, except on these ones where you see those little clear beads at the bottom and top, they're blue, like a light blue color. It looks good. And I've got plenty of stitch markers. Let me grab my box. Oh, it's heavy. This is that. If you remember the Facebook group, this is the old makeup box that I got at the thrift store, and I turned it into a crochet box. So right here are all the stitch markers I made today. I left them hanging up so I could take a picture with them. And there's five pandas. One is on reserve for a trade. <laughs> and the other four are going to be listed. And then these blue ones. Oh, there. Let me not put this up. I made these blue ones. I wish the lighting was better, but the sun's going down. And I used as the clasp are these earring clasps. <laughs> not used. They're new. Just because I prefer them. They're easy for me to open and close and to get into the yarn. Because this part's little and you could sloop it right in there. And you can use them as progress keepers or stitch markers. I got a bunch of these blue ones just because I was trying to use up the beads. But then I have this little box. You're not going to be able to see in there. Of just all kinds of stitch markers that I made. I got these cool big yellow balls. It looks green, but they're yellow. And then some of these. These ones I love. I actually use this kind because I kept some for myself. With these, I don't even know what that's called, beads on there. I'm just gonna, you know, if people are interested, I'll list them. There's these little mushrooms. Oops, that's twisted up. Untwist. There you go. Little, whoop, <laughs> little glass mushrooms. Just all kinds of them in there. And any little charms that I find, I turn into stitch markers. This is like a sparkly purple ball. <laughs> I've also, when you order a bag for me I send three stitch markers just as a bonus gift um I've done that the whole two bags that I've sold so far but if you were to go on to my Etsy store and order a bag from me I would send you three random stitch markers I did the first bag was totally random and then the second one I was like you know what I'm gonna try to like theme it with the bag so the first bag I sent out I don't even remember what stitch markers I sent I just grabbed three random ones but the second one was a green bag and I sent all green stitch markers just to kind of go together but yeah, so if you order um, a bag for me, you'll get some random stitch markers. Ooh, close this. I gotta take pictures of those and then I'll put them in that box. But for, until the, you know, until then, they hang right there just perfectly. <laughs> well, that worked out nice. This box, I keep all my my hooks are in it, my um, all my stitch marking stuff, my safety eyes, my pom pom makers, all those little crochet accessory knickknack thingies are in there. Oh, let's take that there. I also got these two things at the Dollar Tree the other day. They're magnetic um, thingies, Ooh. containers. I got them because I thought I could use them for something, but I haven't yet, so I got them. <laughs> but I just keep them over here in case I do use them. You never know when you might need some kind of container. <laughs> but yeah, and I think that's everything. Let's see here. I talked about Etsy. I talked about the cakewalk. I talked about the Facebook group. What am I forgetting? I think that's everything. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, Knit Crate. <laughs> my Knit Crate stuff is still below. Um, someone else got a Knit Crate through my um, my link. Thank you, whoever you are. Because <laughs> um, I got a commission for that. 
which I do get paid a little bit through Knit Crate if you order a Knit Crate the first month with the coupon code to get 20% off, I get $4 off of that you don't have to pay any extra it comes out of the nick crate people's money um and then if you stay subscribed after that i get a whopping two percent <laughs> this month on the people who stay subscribed my laptop just died <laughs> uh i made 50 cents well times two i made a dollar <laughs> but i do save that money in my paypal and all the patterns that i give away are from that so technically y'all buy the patterns that i give away so i think that's cool it's like you contribute you know you um to the calls <laughs> but yeah and so that will be linked below if you want to get 20 percent off your first knit crate um monthly order which makes it 20 bucks for awesome yarn <laughs> and patterns and um then you can also use that coupon code if you're just buying because they, they also sell their yarn and stuff separately other than in a crate you can buy it separately and use that coupon code and um I think you do get a little no that's not how it works you click on the link and when you buy anything through the link i get a two percent kickback which is literally pennies <laughs> um someone spent a lot of money under my link the other day it was like a hundred something dollars and i didn't even get a buck back <laughs> so um there's a lot of hoops that the money has gone through before it makes it to me there goes jesse he just ran by the window <laughs> he's chasing a cat done. I'm almost done. <laughs> They've been just chasing after Jesse, chasing after a cat. That's so funny. But yeah, I guess I gotta hop off here and let them come back in the house because Devin, he's just like any dad. He gets frustrated really quickly with the toddler. He's so cute. But yeah, so I will see you guys in the next video. All my links will be below. I'm sorry this one's late, but like I said, family stuff. And even though I do enjoy YouTube and being friends with all you people, my family does come first. So when there's family issues, I will deal with that first and then videos. But hopefully I won't be late again. And I'm going to try to get a crochet and chat or a frog and chat out this week. Because I got all those half-finished objects from that girl that I'm going to frog so I can reuse the yarn. Um, yeah, so that'll be some fun videos. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you're all having a good time and good days and everything. And check out the Facebook group if you're not, because uh, tonight, or tomorrow night, whenever you see this video, the Monday, which is the 5th, I think, June 5th, I will be giving away a pattern uh, from Ravelry, so check it out. Bye, guys. Are you a frog? Come here. My mama said you be a frog. You're a big frog. Quick.